Hello, good day. Today, we will be discussing about the Republic Act No. 10066 or the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009. Are you curious or intrigued? Well, let's dive in. History plays an important role in every country, and also, it helps us to develop a better understanding not just the country, but also, of the world. It is an honor to every constituent to give importance to the history through preserving it. However, some people have already taken these important things for granted. The destruction of structures and artifacts that has a deep importance in connection with our history ethnicity, beliefs, and culture are inevitable nowadays. Will you please observe how the Torre de Manila ruins the panorama of Rizal Park? Compare before and now. When National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009 appeared, the destruction and alteration of these important heritages and artifacts are prohibited. This law fosters the preservation and enrichment of the nation's cultural heritage, its histories and properties that aims for the coexistence of historic past with modern society to maintain Filipino identity. This law also strengthens cultural institutions to protect cultural workers ensuring their professional development and well-being. With the help of the National Cultural Heritage Act, our Filipino identity would be persevered and be embedded always in each one of us. We may be diverse, as shown in the painting, but with everyone's uniqueness patched up together, we become one. As the background suggests, let's celebrate our cultures and histories together, everyone. To further enlighten you, National Cultural Heritage Act, as mentioned, provides protection and conservation of national cultural heritage and strengthens the authority of National Commission for Culture and the Arts, NCCA, and its affiliated cultural agencies. The Republic Act No. 10066 is composed of 15 articles divided into 54 sections. Each article contains series of rules and stipulation that are each designated with regards to the protection and preservation of the national cultural heritage in the Philippines. There are things worthy to note among these 15 articles that are divided into 54 sections. Under Article 2, Section 3 defines the terms to avoid any confusions. Some terms that were described under this section are Archives, History Museum. Archives is a public and private records in any format selected for permanent preservation. History is a written record of past events relating to Philippine history. Museum is a permanent institution that researches, acquires, conserves, communicates and exhibits the material evidence of humans and their environment for purposes of education or leisure. Under Article 3, Section 4 is about the categories of cultural properties. These categories include national cultural treasures, important cultural property, world heritage sites, national historical shrine, national historical monument, and national historical landmark. Still under Article 3, Section 5 is a list of cultural properties that could be considered as an important cultural properties by the Commission, National Museum, National Historic Institute, and National Archives. Cultural properties such as works by Aman Lilika N.G. Bayan and works by a national artist can be declared as an important cultural property by the Commission. Archaeological and traditional ethnographic materials are properties that can be considered important by the National Museum. Works of national heroes, mark structure, Structures dating at least 50 years old can be possibly considered as invaluable and precious cultural properties by the National Historical Institute. Lastly, properties such as archival materials or documents dating at least 50 years old can be declared important by the National Archives. Still under Article 3, Section 7, as summarized, aside from the honor given to a cultural property, all cultural properties declared as important cultural property may also receive government funding for its protection conservation and restoration. In Article 9, Sections 35 to 37 is about the privileges of the private owner of the cultural property that is considered as invaluable cultural property. These include the incentives that will be received such as tax exemption and donations, National Heritage Resource Assistance Program, awards and citations. Upon acknowledgement for having an important contributions and services in the area of heritage preservation and conservation efforts. Article 13 and Section 48 states that the relocation, rebuilding or alteration of the cultural property, or which would destroy the property's dignity shall not be done, except for the reason that the disturbance of the cultural property is due to natural causes. In Section 48, the penalties of committing these acts are punishable by the provision law. Upon conviction, 
the offender shall be subject to a fine of not less than 200,000 pesos or imprisonment for a term of not less than 10 years, or both, upon the discretion of the court. The National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009 gave us the confidence to embody our pride of our very own cultures and histories depicted in the painting. We came from many backstories and backgrounds. No wonder, Filipinos are so amazingly unique. Mixed by a bittersweet past and hopeful future, is the image of how beautiful we are in the present. Because of the National Cultural Heritage Act, we were able to preserve national heritages some of which that we even had visited in artifacts. Following the destruction of the Intramuros in World War II, the San Agustin Church was the only building left intact. Established between 1587 and 1606, it is the Philippines' oldest church. Currently, the new building is the third to stand on the site and has experienced seven major earthquakes, as well as the Battle of Manila. It's an active church, and weddings and other ceremonies are in great demand. Located in the town of Daraga, all by in the Philippines. The Church of Cogsaw was built after 1734 by Francisco Blanco. The February 1, 1814 eruption of Mount Mayon located 10 kilometers away destroyed the church, the oldest known church in the Bicol region. The Naga Cathedral was constructed in 1575. Known as the Mother Church of All Churches in southern Luzon, it is also the biggest of all churches in the same area. The earliest pot recovered in the country is this yawning jarlet, declared a national cultural treasure. It has a distinct rim that resembles a shouting or yawning person, hence the name. In 2007, an archaeological group headed by Dr. Armand Mijares of the UP in the town of Penablanca, Cagayan, Diliman found a footbone in Callao Cave. The said skeleton is said to be the earliest human fossil found in the Asia-Pacific region, specifically the third metatarsal of the foot. Just one of the 67 skulls recovered from the Balangase archaeological site in Bolinao, Pangasinan, is the Bolinao skull. They were found along with other ceramics from the early Ming dynasty, 1368 to 1644. The skulls have teeth adorned with gold ornaments, a prehistoric period representation of prosperity and courage. From 2011 to 2012, in Mount Comhantic near Malay town in Quezon province, National Museum archaeologists discovered a total of 15 limestone tombs and other valuable objects. Believed to be the area where a 1,000-year-old village once stood, this burial ground features limestone coffins, a first in the Philippines and proof that our ancestors have used a more advanced burial ritual. Nicole's Adventure and Taoist Temple in Beverly Hills, Cebu Cebu is known for its rich cultural tourist destination that is also considered an important cultural property, ICP in which once you enter that place, you'll feel the spirit of history. To name one, in Beverly Hills Cebu, the Taoist Temple is located, that is declared by the National Museum as an ICP in 2016. The temple is built by the Chinese people in the city in 1972 with an elevation of 110 meters, 360 feet, above sea level. The temple is a towering, multi-tiered, multi-hued attraction accessible by three separate winding routes, according to wikipedia.com. The entrance to the temple was a replica of the Great Wall of China. The temple includes a chapel, a library, a souvenir shop and a wishing well. The spacious balconies offer a scenic view of the downtown Cebu. Once you enter the place observing silence is a must for it is a sacred place for Chinese. Rituals can be done inside the chapel and the temple and taking pictures inside is strictly prohibited. Maxime's Adventure in Rizal Park and Shrine in Tapitan City The Jose Rizal Protected Landscape Monument, also known as the Rizal Park and Shrine, is a protected landscape and monument to the national hero of the Philippines located on the island of Mindanao in the city of Tapitan. It retains the farm site in Barrio Talisay where Jose Rizal was exiled for four years from 1892 to 1896. After being accused by the Spanish colonial authorities of sedition and planning the Philippine Revolution in Manila, the feeling of ecstasy and exhilaration emerge when the thought of knowing that the national hero once, resided in this preserved compound that Maxine personally visited. That's all. Thank you, bro.